how was it for you um, coming down from that, from being on the road for that long, uh, parlaying everything into professional wrestling? And obviously we'll delve into that, but to have yeah. um, every time I die come to an end, how has that been for you? Uh, I'm still having problems. Like I'm still yeah. having problems with it. It's, you know, my life was um, like, it's the best way to say it is like, I don't, like it's alphabet soup, right? It's, it's not like full center. You have to like, look for set, like things, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So like my life was really just like a bunch of things just thrown at the wall. And then you kind of stop that. And then you have to like, realize that like, I have, I have bad problems, like, uh, with like scheduling, you know <sighs> what I mean? Like, yeah, it's stuff. It's just stuff like that. It, it And it's, you know, that's the type of things that like you you're when you're thrown in a van at 17 like no one's really teaching you like life stuff they're just kind of like you just stay in a van and then like when problems occur you just get back in the van you know and uh now it's it's kind of like you you kind of have to like grow up really fast and you realize like oh man I thought I was I thought I was grown up and then all these things just kind of hit you and you're like oh man that's okay this is life this is like this is how life is without a van and a trailer, you know? Yeah. It's uh, like, I, I always think about like the identity crisis that kind of comes from something like that, from doing something for so long. And then that coming to a stop. And then all of a sudden it's like this reevaluation of like, who am I? What am I doing? What's happening again? It's a weird way to just kind of like Bob back up to the surface and take a look around and like really reevaluate what you're doing and what you want to spend your time doing after 100%. you've been doing it for so long. Like it can be such a mind. F- oh, well, the, the biggest thing is like, it's not normal. Like our parents never got to walk out and have 20,000 people scream at them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and like, to kind of like crush the ego on that is like, it's hard, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it, it makes you sound like such just a wimp when you like you're trying to communicate it and like that's something I struggle with a lot of I'm just like dude just suck it up man you're a wimp like stop like you literally had people cater to you in a band for like years and now it's like I I just I had a tour manager and I had a manager and I had you know what I mean like just stuff like that yeah no I I I know exactly what you mean with that but I know what you mean where it's like if if people don't understand that it's like okay you lived a a charmed life for a while and now you're like you know, back to doing whatever. I mean, you're still doing amazing other things, but it is such an adjustment when you've been doing one thing for so long. Like, it's funny. I joke about that all the time from uh, not being at WWE. We used to get all of our information on this app of like, you've got to be at this appearance. You've got this thing coming up. And I'm like, what the am I doing? Like, I'm so bad at scheduling my own stuff. Like, I always joke that I'm like the worst boss I've ever had because I'm like booking shit left, right and center. Did I put it in my phone? Have I sent out the Zoom link? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Having somebody just kind of like corral those things for you. Uh, can be, oh, it's insane. Like yeah. what, when did you get into entertainment? Like when did you start doing entertainment? Uh, probably like around 18, I guess yeah. is when I like first really started doing like, as soon as I finished high school is right when I started doing it. Like I finished high school, didn't know what I was doing, but I knew that I wanted to perform in some capacity. And I was like, second cities in Toronto, that's what I'm going to go do. And that was like yeah. the first thing I was like, take my $250 yeah. and show me what to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you start doing something like that from a young age and it's all you like really know is Mm -hmm. that world that yeah, doing like, yeah, it's, it's a completely different work ethic. It is. Oh, totally. It's such a grind. I'm not a numbers guy. So like, that was one of my big things when I was in school. One of my biggest learning disabilities was just not, I can't remember numbers to save my life. I, Mm -hmm. you can put them there. I have to read it a hundred times for me to even get it, you know? And, um, once I kind of realized that that's really what real life is like, or like you have to go work in a place where like you have to pay attention to all this stuff. And my, my brain just doesn't work that way. So like once I could funnel it into music and kind of like get that ball rolling. And then once I realized like, Oh man, I, I, I kind of know what a tune is. I can kind of like put this together. And then once I found like like like-minded dudes, then it got really easy. You know what I mean? Um, Did you find like other like coping mechanisms to kind of help with those things? I think things that you did struggle to learn, you could find little ways around it that helped you figure it out. A hundred percent. Like I, I, I have to describe, I have to like explain stuff to my fiance sometimes when it like the way my brain works and especially with like music, like I don't, I don't know how to read music. 
So like, I just picked up a guitar and it just made sense. So like, to me, it was more like Tetris than it was anything. I would just make these shapes up in my head and then I would just play these shapes. So like, if I wrote out music to you, it would only make sense to me and the dudes I I was in the band with. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they learned like, your language they had to so like yeah. a lot of it is like x's and o's or i'll use like squares for certain things and triangles for certain things or i'll i'll describe like a a feeling or something like that so yeah. like if i'm gonna write something that's kind of sad i'm gonna use like a delay pedal on it or like it, there, there's like weird or i'm gonna do like high notes and like it's yeah it, it really turned into like more of like a video game to me than it did like that's fascinating Make, making music yeah so that's like a lot cool. of things wrestling to me is like it's like writing a song so like once I kind of like understood how to write that song it was like oh okay that's cool like there's an intro there's an outro there's a chorus there's sure. you know and it really does work like that you know what I mean like it mm-hmm. you know you need bridges and you need like stuff like that so like wrestling still to this day is is still kind of shapes and like weird colors and stuff like that like I, I'll see colors for certain things which is like really weird wow yeah. that's yeah. amazing I love that that's like a transferable skill of like what you were doing at music to be able to apply that to wrestling that's that's pretty cool um yeah. where okay so your love of wrestling you're touring with this band like you said we're on the road from 17 to 43 (laughs) finding your passion for professional wrestling to the point of wanting to actually work at it get signed to aew and like have this other career how the hell did you do that (laughs) that's crazy yeah when i when i was a kid i was i mean i was obsessed with wrestling and it just never seemed realistic because there was nothing near buffalo like there wasn't and there was like a couple guys, like I did some training with a dude in Buffalo, like when I was like 17, I went over the border and did some, some training over there like mm-hmm. that. I blew my ACL out when I was oh, like shit. 18 and that it literally was the catalyst that got a guitar in my hand more and got me to play like seriously, like, and I'm, I think I'm, I'm I can talk once people like get me to talk, but I'm pretty shy. Like I'm pretty like closed, like inward you know what I mean Mm -hmm. and um I think that was like like my coping mechanism to like blowing my ACL out I was like okay well I'm just gonna pick up this guitar and then I started a band and I kind of like I don't know like I kind of kind of got the ball rolling like with that just to Mm -hmm. see how it was and then once I kind of like caught the you know caught the the fever I just kind (laughs) of like it just kept going you know what I mean and and every time I died was like really easy like it was, it came together like that. And, um, it's crazy how things just work like that. Sometimes like the way that they're supposed to like when things are, I always kind of go back and forth sometimes, like even just in like my own career, if I feel like something like comes together really easily, it's like, okay, cool. That's the thing I'm supposed to be doing. But then sometimes you do hit those hurdles where it's like, no, just like put your head down and grind and still get this other shit done. Even though it's not coming to you as easily, it can be like such a catch 22. I find if I'm like pushing against a grain too much, I'm like, all right, maybe I should stop doing this or like reevaluate what I'm doing. But it's, yeah, it's hard to decipher those things sometimes. And I, I think that like what you say though, I I think that that's like a, a major, a major thing when people ask you like for advice, I think that that's the thing that I always tell them is like persistence is really the biggest thing where like, you're going to hit a hurdle. And if you realize that that hurdle's too tough, it just isn't for you. Yeah. You know, and that. I've had numerous conversations with people on tour where like they'll tour the band and the guys, there's a guy complaining and I just pull him aside and I go, dude, maybe touring isn't for you. Like it just, it it isn't for you. Like if, if you're missing everything, every single second that just, it's not for you, man. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like it's okay. It's, it's, it's like failure is not failure is literally like the best thing for success because it, it literally tells you where you're at. And And not everything is for everyone. Just because this one thing doesn't work out for you doesn't mean like you find your other lane and you gravitate towards that thing. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I always feel that way about like different successes on things too. It's like, just like, first of all, this line of work, especially is not for everybody. And that's how people get weeded out along the way is if you can hack it 
during some yeah. of those really tough times. I mean, grinding it out on the road, people I'm sure think that being on the road like that's super glamorous and fun and yeah. everyone's partying all the time, but it's, it's definitely not always that. I always kind of try to knock people down when they say that it's like, Oh yeah. Being a band is great. Like sitting in a 15 passenger van for five, eight, <laughs> you know, eight hours, barely <laughs> making it to a show, having to load equipment through a crowd mm -hmm. of a thousand people. Like, that's awesome. Like that's, that's literally what I wanted when I want to start a van. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then people yeah, are yeah. like, Oh really? You got to do that? I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then you think that I'm going to hang out after the show. No, I got to get back in the van and drive eight <laughs> hours through the night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To yeah. Somewhere else. 